Think of your body like a house where you live. Just like an old family home, it's where you reside. But here's the thing. We often forget that there are two separate parts to this setup. You've got the body, which is like the building itself, and then there's you, the person inside. Understanding how these two parts relate to each other is super important in understanding what it means to be human. Now, this house, it's not just made of lifeless stuff like bricks and wood. Nope, it's alive and constantly renewing itself. It can fix itself up when things go wrong, which is pretty amazing. But even though it's resilient, it's also fragile in some ways. We've got to take care of it, just like we take care of a real house, making sure it stays safe and sound. The connection between the person and their body starts when we understand that each person is their own unique self. And when they come into the world through their body, it's like moving into a house. The person exists before the body survives beyond it, and some philosophies even suggest that they continue through time, creating new bodies and carrying the experiences of past lives into each new one. This means that each body we inhabit reflects the level of inner harmony we've achieved. Now just like a house needs maintenance, our bodies do too. Often we assume our bodies will take care of themselves, much like we might assume a nice house will stay nice without upkeep. But just as a neglected house deteriorates, so does our vitality if we don't actively care for our bodies. You've probably visited a friend's house at some point and seen a well-kept exterior but noticed neglect inside. This happens because people often focus on making the outside look good to impress others, while ignoring what's going on inside. Similarly, we might take care to look healthy on the outside, but neglect the inside of our bodies. Often, we put a lot of time, energy and money into making our bodies look good on the outside, but we forget about what's going on inside. We're more focused on the surface appearance than on keeping our insides healthy. It's like we believe that if we take care of how we look, everything else will be fine. But that's not true. Sometimes when there's a problem inside a house, like with the plumbing or wiring, we call in professionals to fix it up. Similarly, when our bodies have serious issues, we turn to experts like doctors, physiotherapists and dietitians to help us out. But most of the time, we just go along assuming that our bodies can handle whatever we throw at them. And because of this assumption, we end up mistreating our bodies every single day. As we think about it, we realise that our bodies, where we temporarily live, are part of our duties in life. It's like a community of flesh that we're responsible for, not just physically, but also in terms of our spiritual journey and our place in the universe. If someone wants to grow spiritually and develop themselves psychologically, they also need to take care of their worldly responsibilities. Some people focus so much on their spiritual growth that they forget about their families and homes. They might think that dedicating themselves to bigger spiritual goals frees them from everyday duties, but that's not true. In fact, one of the most important parts of being spiritual is taking care of the things we've been given charge of, whether it's our family, our home, or anything else we're responsible for. When it comes to our bodies, it's not just about understanding the spiritual aspects like energy centers or meditation potential. We also need to remember the basics, like keeping our plumbing and wiring in good shape and doing regular cleaning. Sometimes when we're focused on reaching higher spiritual levels, we forget about these everyday needs. If we start neglecting our bodies, they can start acting up, causing problems. It's up to us to make sure our bodies and minds stay in harmony. Our minds rely a lot on our brains, which are physical organs. For our brains to work properly, our bodies need to be healthy too. If our bodies get hurt or sick, it can mess with our thoughts and emotions. So taking care of our bodies is essential for our minds to function well. Over the years, I've met many people whose neglect of their physical health has harmed their mental well-being. These are often folks with decent abilities who could have achieved something meaningful in their lives. But because they didn't pay attention to how their bodies and minds are connected, they ended up in trouble. What could have been a great partnership between their body and mind turned into a disaster. The body is like a foundation that holds up the person. Everything we do in life, especially the important stuff, 
depends on how our bodies are doing on the inside. When the body feels off, the person feels unhappy. If the body is uncomfortable, it affects our mood. And when the body feels worn out, it can make the person feel discouraged. Most of the time, our mental and emotional feelings come from how our bodies are feeling physically. Sometimes these physical discomforts happen because we're not taking care of ourselves properly, while other times they're just part of life and we can't do much about them. But no matter what, it's clear that our bodies are super important. If someone sacrifices their health for something, it better be really important because messing with our body's balance can cause all sorts of problems, no matter what the reason. Nowadays, we understand that it's important to have methods or routines to help our minds grow and our emotions stay in check. These routines are especially important now. There are lots of places popping up, big and small, old and new, that focus on these routines to help people become more aware and improve themselves. They aim to make people's minds bigger and better, to make their characters more noble, and sometimes even to develop special abilities like sensing things beyond the ordinary. But here's the thing. Almost all of these processes that actually work require a lot of self-discipline. Anything that promises results without effort is usually not worth much. If we want to improve ourselves, we have to be dedicated and put in the work. So, people start trying out different routines and practices to see what works for them. Our bodies can also cause problems, partly because of what we eat. A lot of the food we eat doesn't agree with our bodies, but instead of listening to what our bodies are trying to tell us, we just pop a pill and keep going. We eat too much, too little, or the wrong things, and it messes with our body's peace of mind. Our bodies seem to have a mind of their own sometimes, and when we try to do something good or productive, they might not cooperate. So when we're trying to be better people, we have to start with the basics. And one of the most basic things we have to deal with is our bodies. So there's a two-way relationship happening here. It's not just about how the person feels about their body, but also how the body affects the person. Sometimes one gets in the way of the other, and sometimes they both get in each other's way. But first things first, let's talk about the most basic situation. Trying to get the body to work together with the person's goals. The person needs to figure out what they want to achieve, what their problems are, and what they're aiming for. Once they've figured that out, they need to get their body on board with their plans. But here's the thing, the body faces challenges too. It has to deal with how outside circumstances affect its nervous system, digestion, senses and thinking processes. All these things mean that the body goes through a lot and it's important to try to control these challenges as much as possible. Here's a simple example that shows a big problem we have today. The average person spends about two to four hours every day watching TV. Now, TV has a lot of different shows and things on it, but one of the biggest issues is how it affects our emotions and reactions. Physical energy is like the fuel that keeps us going. We need to use it wisely and not waste it. If we waste our energy, it's like wasting our life. People who waste their energy all the time might find that their life gets shorter, their health suffers and they can't achieve their goals as easily. I know many people who are angry all the time, from morning till night. They get mad at everything, even things that aren't really worth getting mad about. When someone wants to rise above their body or become better than their physical self, they need to focus on being internally peaceful. They need to have a calm, relaxed attitude that helps their body work properly. This means their stomach can digest food well their body can get rid of waste like it should, and their body chemistry stays balanced. When we feel angry, disgusted or unhappy, it doesn't just affect our mood. It messes with our body too. It makes it hard for our body to do its job properly, like digesting food. This can lead to all sorts of problems, like aches, pains and chronic illnesses. These are often caused by our negative emotions damaging our body over time. So, when we're trying to be better people and improve ourselves, we need to remember to take care of our bodies too. Our bodies are always part of the plan, and we shouldn't ignore them. 
it's a mistake to spoil our bodies or to be too hard on them. We shouldn't let our bodies control us, but we also shouldn't be too strict with them. It's about finding a balance, like a parent guiding a child, not like a dictator ruling over a country. One way to deal with bodily problems is to understand them better. If you have health issues, you probably have some idea why they're happening, but a lot of people ignore the reasons and just keep doing what they want. However, if you want to achieve something great, like becoming a scholar, a mystic, or a contributor to society, you need to take your body seriously. Your goal isn't to fight against your body, but to challenge it to be its best self. You want to encourage it to be even better, rather than pushing it into a corner where it has to fight just to survive. If you look at ancient times, especially at the Greeks, they were really into this idea. Many of their schools for learning and philosophy were called gymnasiums. Even today in Europe, some schools are called gymnasiums. But here, gymnasium means more than just a place to work out. It's a whole system of education. In a gymnasium, people didn't just exercise their bodies. They exercised their minds and emotions too. Whether you were jogging or studying Latin, everything you did used up energy. The gymnasium was where you learned to control and direct that energy towards your goals. This idea of a gymnasium is important because it shows that our minds, emotions and bodies are all connected. They need to work together as a team, not be ignored or mistreated. Especially here in the Western world, where success often means making a lot of money, it's easy to forget about taking care of ourselves properly. We get frustrated when healthcare costs go up. But one reason for that is because we're relying more and more on medical care. When we become dependent on something, we open ourselves up to being taken advantage of. If people took better care of themselves, there wouldn't be such a huge demand for medical help and doctors might not charge as much. But because we've created a system where we abuse our bodies and neglect our health, doctors can charge whatever they want. So, if we want to grow and improve ourselves, we need to start by educating all parts of ourselves, our minds, emotions and bodies. That's how we can truly succeed in the long run. The Greeks really valued exercise, and they believed it should start from a young age. They thought it was important for everyone to stay active and healthy. Socrates, one of the famous Greek philosophers, said that exercise shouldn't be boring or just about following a routine. He couldn't understand why someone would want to jog around the block just for the sake of jogging. The only reason people do it, he thought, is because they're desperate to stay healthy. The Greeks had different ways of exercising that were much more enjoyable than what we might think of today. They lived in a different world where people didn't spend all day sitting at a desk or doing things they didn't enjoy. They also didn't have processed foods like we do now. They ate what grew around them, and it was all natural. Think about animals like cats or dogs. They don't need to do special exercises like lifting weights or running on a treadmill to stay healthy. They just do what comes naturally to them, and they stay in good shape. But as humans, sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves the way we should. We get caught up in our busy lives and don't pay attention to our health. That's why it's important to remember what really matters. We need to focus on the basics and make sure we're taking care of ourselves the way nature intended. The Greeks had a different way of looking at things than we do now. They understood that you can't become excellent just by wearing fancy clothes or looking good on the outside. Who you are inside matters most, and no amount of decoration can change that. Instead of trying to hide their flaws, the Greeks focused on living in a way that prevented flaws from developing. If they had imperfections, they accepted them. For example, there's a story about Socrates being pigeon-chested, meaning his chest stuck out more than usual but he didn't try to hide it or get surgery to fix it. He just accepted it and lived his life. Even with his imperfections, Socrates was respected by others. When he was called to defend the Greeks in battle, the enemy soldiers were so intimidated by him that they avoided fighting him. He became a hero, but he still had struggles. For example, he had trouble staying awake while on guard duty, so he turned this into a challenge and practiced standing on one foot to stay alert. Eventually, he got so good at it that he could stand guard for eight hours straight without even switching feet. 
This shows how discipline and determination can make you stronger, both physically and mentally. In general, older generations tended to live simpler lives compared to us. They didn't have such aggressive ambitions, and people were often content to stay in the same social position throughout their lives. Because they didn't chase after false values or engage in artificial activities, they seemed to do pretty well. In fact, during the age of Pericles in ancient Greece, there were hundreds of brilliant thinkers who emerged. It's estimated that Greece alone had between four and six hundred remarkable intellects during that time. These thinkers were able to flourish because they lived naturally. They didn't waste time on false appearances or trying to fix problems caused by unhealthy living. Instead, they focused on using their natural talents and abilities to their fullest. While it might be hard for us to completely emulate their way of life, we can certainly learn from their example and try to simplify our own lives a little bit. We need to make sure that our efforts in life lead to positive outcomes and don't harm our important goals. There's an old saying, probably from one of the ancient Greeks, that the worst thing you could tell someone is to live extravagantly. Living in luxury was seen as a terrible curse then, and it still is today. In fact, luxury is one of the main reasons why a lot of people don't think clearly nowadays. We waste our energy on things that don't really matter instead of saving it for what's important. Our bodies are born with energy, but we need to take care of it. We can't fix it if we waste it on things that aren't valuable. So we need to learn how to work with our bodies, understand their potential, and live our lives accordingly. These are important steps to ensuring happiness and well-being for everyone involved. The human body is really fascinating when we study it. It's like a strong building that can repair itself when it gets damaged. It's made up of living materials like bricks and steel that respond and react to what's happening inside. Overseeing this body is something that should be pretty smart, considering the thousands and millions of years of human evolution. But sometimes, things don't work out that way. Today, humans have incredible potential for self-improvement. We can achieve more than ever before. If we see evolution as a continuous process of growth, then we have a wealth of past experiences to draw from at any given moment. We might not consciously remember everything, but our instincts, intuition and conscience are shaped by our previous experiences of right and wrong. Even though our minds control our bodies, our bodies can't refuse to obey except in extreme situations where survival is at stake. But humans have the power to change their attitudes towards their bodies whenever they want. Buddha had a strong message about taking care of our bodies. He believed that the real problem for humans is when they live in a body but don't take care of it properly. He compared it to being a bad housekeeper. If we neglect our bodies, they will naturally start to deteriorate. According to Buddha, the real troublemaker here is the mind. It's the mind that makes mistakes and expects the body to deal with them, even though they're not good for the body. In a way, the mind becomes a tyrant, causing harm to the body it depends on. Just like how countries go to war because of the decisions made by leaders, our minds can become like dictators, harming the body they should be protecting. This can damage our relationships with others and our environment. So, to fix this, we need to start from the basics. One important thing we can do is to create routines that we can stick to without constantly breaking them. This helps us take better care of our bodies in the long run. Eating regularly and choosing the right kinds of food is important for our bodies. Snacks and unhealthy foods can harm our bodies, so it's best to avoid them as much as possible. It's also crucial to give our bodies time to rest throughout the day. People over 50 especially need to take short breaks to let their bodies recharge. Some people might think resting is a waste of time, but it's actually necessary for our health. If we keep pushing ourselves when we're tired, we're not only wasting time but also harming our bodies in the long run. Imagine the story of the Zen monk who washes his dinner plate after eating and then drinks the dishwater. It might seem strange, but there's a lesson there. In life, sometimes we have to deal with the less pleasant parts too. It's like saying that whatever mess we clean up, we have to deal with the consequences. 
It's a reminder to be mindful and thoughtful in our actions, just like the wise interpretations of ancient stories teach us. Once we've sorted out these little details, it's a good idea to dig deeper and understand why we have the attitudes we do. Nowadays, attitudes seem to have a big influence on us, and many of the attitudes we hold can be harmful. An attitude is like making up your mind about something before you even have all the facts. It's when you see everything in a certain way because you refuse to consider other viewpoints. Attitudes that are confrontational, self-centered, vengeful or filled with sadness and self-pity can all take a toll on our bodies. When we adopt these negative attitudes, our bodies start to suffer. If you hold on to negative thoughts for too long, it can even affect your physical health. This is because our mental and physical processes are closely connected. For example, the way we digest food symbolically reflects how we assimilate information and experiences mentally. If we take things calmly and understand our bodies, we can become better people. Our body is like a good friend that helps us if we take care of it. But just like a car that's not looked after, if we neglect our bodies, they won't last long. Once we understand this, we can build a good relationship with our bodies. It's hard for someone who treats others badly to have loyal friends. Similarly, if we don't take care of our bodies, they won't be loyal to us. To earn the loyalty of our bodies, we need to treat them well. We must show respect, integrity and fairness in all we do. If we do this, our bodies will respond by being more efficient, comfortable and energetic. But if we ignore our bodies and don't care about their well-being, we'll face problems. We might do things that harm our health without thinking about the consequences. So it's important to take care of our bodies and treat them well to live a healthy life. When we neglect our connection with our bodies, we become vulnerable to various health problems and illnesses that spread widely. As we grow older, we have to make some adjustments with our bodies. They start to signal that they're not as energetic as before, and we need to pay more attention to them. It's similar to taking care of an old house that's showing signs of wear and tear. Even if we've maintained it well, as it ages, it requires extra care. If we don't provide that care, it will deteriorate over time. So as we age, our bodies need certain preservation methods to keep them functioning well. One big mistake some people make is trying to stay young physically, even when they're getting older. They might push themselves to do things their bodies can't handle anymore. But no amount of willpower can make the body act younger than it is. Some folks stay active even as they age, but when we reach a certain point in life, we need to befriend our bodies. We should try to keep our bodies healthy and functioning for as long as possible. If someone ignores their body's needs and keeps doing whatever they want, they'll run into trouble. Sure, they might rely on medical help or think they can bounce back from mild neglect. But every time we ignore our body's signals or push it too hard, there's a price to pay. It's important to listen to our bodies and take care of them as we age. The Greek, Egyptian and Roman mysteries were incredibly effective educational systems. They were unique because they didn't just focus on teaching the mind. They also paid attention to the body, emotions and social responsibilities. These mysteries aim to educate every aspect of a person, making them as well-rounded as possible. Through these systems, individuals learn not only academic subjects, but also how to navigate their emotions, aspirations and relationships with others. Education in these mysteries aim to develop individuals into the best version of themselves, considering their unique strengths and weaknesses. If someone had areas where they needed improvement, these mysteries encouraged humility instead of trying to pretend to be perfect. They acknowledged imperfections and worked on them with honesty and integrity. The Greeks had a traditional way of teaching wisdom. They believed that to become wise, a person needed to prepare both their mind and their body. This meant not only studying subjects like math, astronomy and music, but also understanding how the body connects to the person as a whole. Different philosophers had different views about the body. However, most agreed that the body was a gift from the divine, given to us so we could interact with nature. 
the human body served as a bridge between us and the natural world, connecting us to farms, forests and other people. It provided us with senses that were essential for developing our mental and spiritual lives. So the body was seen as our connection to the world around us, which shows how important it is in our lives. If it wasn't important, we wouldn't have been given one in the first place. The ancients believed that the body is important because we need it to live and do things. They also thought there's a right way and a wrong way to use it, and doing things the right way is good while doing things the wrong way is bad. They believed in keeping life simple and making good choices. They thought that as people lived their lives, they needed to make changes to become better. This meant getting rid of bad habits and behaving in a better way. They believed that even if someone was really smart, they couldn't be truly wise if they were selfish. They believed that selfishness got in the way of understanding deeper truths. The ancients also thought that if someone believed in false ideas, it would stop them from understanding true ones. They believed that to find the wisdom they sought, people had to let go of false beliefs and be open to new ideas. We have three amazing sources of wisdom available to us. Firstly, there's scripture, which includes the sacred writings from various religions. Then, there's nature, which teaches us about the divine plan through its workings. Lastly, there's humanity itself. By understanding ourselves and others, we can learn to tap into our inner strengths and improve ourselves. Understanding nature is crucial for understanding ourselves. As we observe the laws that govern the natural world, we start to see that we are part of this larger system. We realize that our bodies are bound by the same laws that govern the earth. And just as the earth follows the rules of the universe, we must also align ourselves with these laws. The real conflict arises not between the heavens and the earth, but within ourselves. It's our own desires and ambitions that often lead to conflict. Once we recognize this, we can start to build a better relationship with ourselves and with the world around us. It's fascinating to understand that our bodies carry memories from the past. Within us, there's a record of how previous bodies functioned, how they were trained and what they achieved. A clear example of this is seen in musicians. Musicians, whether vocalists or instrumentalists, need to control their bodies. They have to practice regularly and commit themselves to maintaining their peak performance. They can't afford to neglect or overlook their talent. They must protect and nurture it. While not everyone desires to commit to such a degree of dedication, we all need to serve and nurture the talents or abilities we seek to develop. We must learn to control our disposition, which involves both physical actions and mental reactions. This interaction between the body and mind is something we encounter every day. So if we truly want to achieve our goals, we need to heed the wisdom of the Zen philosophy in one aspect. When someone finds inner peace, it's like they're standing in the light of heaven. This peace is the key to how humans relate to the vastness of space. Space is quiet in a way we can't fully understand. Most of the important messages we receive aren't heard with our ears. They come as thoughts, dreams, hopes and mystical experiences. Everything that occurs is a test we must learn to face with silence. What's important for us to understand is that silence is like harmony for our bodies. When our bodies are silent, it means everything is working smoothly. It means our food is digesting properly, our digestion and elimination are in good shape, and we're resting well. A silent body is free from harmful substances that can harm it. We need to make sure our bodies are calm and not always asking for something or worried about something. Once our bodies are quiet, we can find inner peace. We can enjoy reading a good book, take a walk in nature to feel refreshed, or admire a beautiful piece of art that uplifts our spirits. Inner silence means we're free from distractions, conflicts, or biases. Once we've achieved this physical and mental silence, we can decide what we want to fill it with. It's like cleaning out an old house and then choosing the right furniture to make it comfortable. Similarly, we clear our minds of unnecessary clutter and then fill our thoughts with enriching ideas while keeping away anything that disrupts our peace. As we go through this process, we realize something important. Most of the things that disturb us, 
are the ones we ignore or push away. We get upset by situations we haven't thought through, analysed or controlled. So, when we truly achieve inner silence, we'll notice fewer interruptions. Things that bothered us a lot last week might not bother us at all now if our inner peace is stronger. Silence isn't about ignoring things or creating a void. It's about finding peace and tranquility within ourselves. It's the strongest state we can be in. Just shutting off the mind isn't helpful. We can't stop thoughts altogether. Instead, we can elevate our thoughts by improving the way we think. So, we start to reintroduce into our silence the things that bring us joy. We begin to enjoy listening to beautiful music and admiring great works of art. We also explore the talents and abilities within us that we haven't fully discovered yet. We're building a new life centred around peace, inner happiness and continuous growth. We're enriching our values and gradually filling our mental space with positive things. It's like furnishing a house. We're adding new things, but they're chosen carefully and with the right intentions. We're not doing it to impress others or to compete with our neighbours. Our goal is to enhance our inner life with things that truly matter and bring us fulfilment, regardless of their age or value in the eyes of others. So we can explore some hobbies that bring us joy. We can dive into good books and spend time with friends who uplift us. We also learn that having a variety of experiences in our inner life is important. For example, if we pray constantly without taking breaks, it can be overwhelming. Similarly, if we rush into helping others without understanding our own needs, we might feel frustrated. We all need to figure out how to make our inner peace the foundation of a fulfilling life. When our life is built on inner quietness, it's like having a shield against negativity. We become less affected by conflicts and negative influences. There's a tale about Diogenes who chose to live in a tub in a busy area of Athens. He often spoke to his friends while standing near a wall that led up to another level. One day a soldier disagreed with him and spat at him from above. Diogenes looked up, then turned to his friend and said, You know, I should be angry at that man, but I've forgotten how. For most of us today, it's not easy to forget how to feel angry or seek revenge. But there's a deeper peace within us that says this isn't helpful. It tells us that we're wasting energy that we can't afford to lose. Energy is precious, and we're seeing shortages of it all around the world. The only energy we have in abundance is our own. The energy within us that we can use for the greater good. So we can't afford to waste any of it. We can't afford to waste time on unimportant things. Small talk, trivial activities, and pointless social gatherings won't help us grow. Instead, we should focus on enriching our lives with meaningful activities. Once we have control over our attitudes, we can ask ourselves important questions. For example, why do we want to become more spiritual or enlightened? There may be many answers, but we need to choose the ones that truly resonate with us. One reason to strive for improvement is because it's our destiny to keep growing. Another reason is that the more we learn and understand, the more we can help others. It's not helpful to share our opinions without understanding them fully. Epictetus referred to this as a falling sickness of the reason. Instead of giving advice that hasn't worked for us, we should focus on sharing knowledge and experiences that have truly benefited us. We all desire to grow and improve ourselves. We have this incredible energy inside us, like a battery, waiting to be put to good use. We don't want to waste this energy or let it go to waste. We don't want to reach the end of our lives with all this untapped potential. Instead, we want to use it wisely, especially for the benefit of others. One of the biggest mistakes we can make is wanting to improve ourselves just to feel superior to others. It's a sad idea and won't make us truly better. Our bodies and minds won't tolerate it. False motives can be as harmful as bacteria and germs and can cause us harm just as quickly. We need to grow because it's what we're supposed to do. It's our right to become better. And it's our responsibility to do everything we can to develop ourselves so we can help others as much as possible. If we only focus on our own gains without wanting to help others, we're not using our time wisely. 
It's worth thinking about how two people can do the exact same thing, but for very different reasons. One person might do something with good intentions, while another might not have any real intention at all. What matters most isn't just the action itself, but the motive behind it, the reason why you're doing it. So it's crucial for each person to have good motives, ensuring that their actions are genuinely good and not just superficial gestures without any real meaning behind them. So let's think about why we're generous to other people. Are we doing it because we hope they'll be generous back to us? Or maybe we're trying to show off how wealthy we are by being generous. Some might even see it as a way to seem like they're part of a higher social class. And then there's the idea of being generous because our religion tells us to. But all of these reasons are not really the right ones. Even if it's because of religious teachings, it's not genuine unless it comes from a deep place within ourselves. True generosity comes from the heart, without expecting anything in return, without needing to show it off. In fact, in the past, giving in secret was seen as the best way to do it. Back in the old days, people didn't do good deeds to get attention or praise. Take St. Nicholas, for example, the guy who inspired the idea of Santa Claus. He was all about giving in secret. Legend has it that he'd ride around on a donkey at night, tossing coins into people's windows, helping those who needed it most. But he never stuck around for thanks or recognition. He even went as far as selling stuff from his church to help feed the poor. Some say he even started the tradition of hanging up stockings for Christmas after a coin he threw landed in a kid's stocking. St. Nicholas showed us that true charity comes from the heart, without expecting anything in return. I once had a friend who did things he liked without really knowing why. When I asked him why he did something, he simply said, It makes me happy, so I do it. His actions were kind and thoughtful, showing that he was drawn to the right things. Sometimes we just have a gut feeling about things, and we act on that feeling. But it's important not to let hidden motives creep in, because these hidden motives can affect us physically causing problems like allergies or other health issues. So, it's important to be honest with ourselves and our bodies if we want to stay healthy and happy for a long time. As we continue on this journey of seeking knowledge and understanding, the next step often involves choosing what to study. Many people want to learn about beliefs or teachings that can improve their lives, which is a good thing. However, there's a challenge – we need to be careful about what we choose to believe. There are countless ideas out there, but not all of them are reliable or trustworthy. When we start learning, we have to consider the motives of those teaching us. Are they genuinely trying to help us? Or are they more interested in benefiting themselves or fulfilling their own desires? It's important to be discerning and think critically about the teachings we encounter. For many people... Turning to religion can sometimes be a way to find comfort or satisfaction when they're feeling frustrated in other areas of life. It might seem like a way to stand out or be noticed in something, which can give a sense of importance. However, this isn't the right reason to turn to religion. When people have the wrong motives, it can lead to health problems. Even the medicines and treatments we use can have moral implications. Sometimes, we might need to think about our emotions like we think about chemistry. There's a science behind why we feel certain ways or think certain thoughts. If our reasons aren't rooted in inner peace and sincerity, it can be risky for our future well-being. There's something important we shouldn't forget. Sometimes, even from teachings that aren't great, people can still become better. It might sound strange, but if someone is truly sincere... They won't let bad teachings corrupt them. They'll find their own meaning in things. And often, it's better than what the original lesson intended. Sincere people are protected from corruption because they're honest inside. As W.C. Fields once said, you can't trick an honest person. When people are dishonest or looking for shortcuts, they're more likely to be cheated. But when you're truly sincere and seek help from outside... It's crucial to have inner peace. This peace protects your body, mind and heart and helps you connect with your soul in a clear and wonderful way. As you progress further, 
things tend to get a bit more complicated. When someone who's still learning makes mistakes, and they're not sure why they're doing what they're doing, there's usually some leniency. But when someone who knows better intentionally goes against what they know is right, that's when they get into trouble. So, the more we learn about truth, the more we're responsible for following it. If we go against what we know is true, especially as we gain more understanding, it's a serious problem. So, it all boils down to having the right reasons behind what we do. When our motives are good, and we make reasonable choices, we usually end up with a good amount of time on this earth. Inner peace tends to lead to normal body functions. When we're calm inside, even challenging foods can be digested properly because our mind isn't stressing out our body. But if we eat something hard to digest while also holding a grudge against someone or trying risky remedies, we're making things worse. If we handle things right and behave well, there's no reason why we can't have a fulfilling life. Even if we have past karma to deal with, we can still have a good life and plan for an even better one. By focusing on inner peace and quiet, we can overcome many external challenges. We worry about pollution and other problems, but if we're internally calm and focused on doing good work, we can handle a lot. However, if we let noise and chaos inside us, it's much harder to deal with external challenges. So it's important to cultivate the right attitudes. And it all starts with inner peace. As we journey through life, our body acts like a guide, showing us the direct results of our thoughts, feelings and actions. It's like a barometer, indicating when things are going well and when they're not. For example, when we're extravagant or wasteful, our body may experience deprivation. If we don't rest properly or become too absorbed in something, our body lets us know. It warns us about improper behaviour, diet and exercise. Our body essentially helps us stick to the rules of healthy living. Because our body signals are so clear and immediate, it's often easier to understand and follow its cues than those of our mind and emotions. There's something really clear about the body in all this. We might think we can trick our feelings or fool our thoughts, but when we get a stomach ulcer, we can't ignore it. It's there, and it's not going away until we do something about it. If we ignore it for too long, it can seriously harm us. So we're facing a law of nature that's not trying to hurt us on purpose, but it's just how things work. Our body shows us the results of our actions, whether they're good or bad. We can see the consequences of our mistakes creeping up on us, and we realise that years of bad habits can really affect our future. Most people have dreams of a better life ahead, maybe retiring to the countryside or doing things they've always wanted to do. They hope for a good reward for all the hard work they've put in. So let's think about it this way. Why did they work and how did they work? Did they work because they knew they needed to? Or did they just work to get a pension and do the things they wanted later? If they work sincerely, putting in a good day's work and earning their wages properly then their body, mind and emotions are likely to support them. But for someone who didn't really care about their job, who just took what they could get without giving much in return, when it's time to retire and relax, they often find they can't. Their health might be too poor to enjoy anything, or they might feel so tired and disillusioned that they don't even want to. So, the reason why you work also affects what you get in the future. If you're always irritated and dissatisfied with your job, it can unfortunately affect your body, and this, in turn, can limit how enjoyable your retirement is. Many people retire feeling tired, worried, worn out and disappointed, and they don't feel like doing anything. But no one has to feel this way. They create this feeling themselves. They feel disappointed when they expect things that are impossible when they don't get what they haven't earned, or when they're let down by the world around them. But the solution to all of this lies in their own attitude. Sometimes, a bad attitude can affect our kidneys or liver, but in most cases, it's the attitude that comes first. If you hold on to a bad attitude for a long time, it can eventually affect your liver and kidneys, leading to permanent problems. So it's important to have peace within yourself, or else you might end up with disabilities. If you do end up with disabilities, 
it's important to accept them gracefully, knowing that every action and decision you make is part of your journey towards personal growth. Despite the mistakes and challenges, every effort contributes to your evolution towards your fullest potential, which is the ultimate goal of life. Deity, as the great teacher and guide, has a plan for us to learn and grow, which will eventually lead to success. Sometimes, though, we wait too long to start doing things right. We might not have the right reasons at first, or we might lack the energy later on, but the best time to start is now. By treating our body well and maintaining a positive relationship with it, we show that we can control ourselves and discipline our actions. When we work together with our body, like partners in a team, we create a situation where success is almost guaranteed. If one fails, it can affect the other, and sometimes even our entire environment. So, let's work closely with our body, and we'll experience improved health, greater happiness, and peace of mind. Thank you for listening.